Well, good morning. Welcome back to the broadcast retirement network. I'm Jeff Snyder. This is BRN AM for Friday, May 5th, 2023. And our top story today, personality differences and investment decision making. And joining me now to discuss this and a lot more is Zheng Zhang Jiang. He's an associate professor at the Northwestern University Kellogg School of Management. Professors, great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. The pleasure is mine. Well, the, I think the pleasure is entirely yours. And you and, and a, a group of researchers create uh, did a lot of research around personality and how personality translates to investment decision making. From your perspective, how important is our personality when you look at other factors like sex and race, et cetera? So uh, let me say a couple of things. Uh, so first, uh, I think our interest is driven by the lack of explanations for investment decisions and outcomes. So in the finance literature, we have been searching for individual characteristics, experiences, things like that, that could drive or explain the observed differences in investment decisions and outcomes. And that has been quite a challenge. So the background is that um, there has been a challenge to figure out the factors. And on top of that, I think the personalities come in a unique angle because that allows us to leverage what we already know about personalities in other life decisions, including economic decisions. So that gives us a connection to, to this very large literature about the whole like, span of life experiences. And finally, you said something about the gender and other demographics. So this is also something that surprised us, Expos. We can roughly run a horse race between personalities and what we call the demographic variables including things like gender, income, uh, education, things like that. Personalities across different outcome variables uh, have a pretty strong explanatory power compared to a large set of such demographics. Um, so having said that, let me also say that uh, those two things are also not mutually exclusive. For example, we also know that there is a large association between certain traits in personalities vis-a-vis -vis things like gender, and age and things like that. So they are in some sense also complementary ways of, of understanding this issue. Yeah, and, and it really probably gives you some insight. You know, um, you think about kind of the current economic environment, for example, uh, inflation, uh, high cost of goods. I mean, it, these create a lot of hesitancy with people. How, how predictive is the personality of, of a person? We'll get into the personality traits and types in a couple seconds, but you know, given all the circumstances, it must be very interesting to look at these personality traits or types and say, OK, well, someone may may have a little bit of an aversion to investing or they may more be more conservative, whereas another personality type, they're going to be a lot more open and more interested in, uh, in investing. Uh, that's exactly our main takeaway message. Indeed, there seems to be uh, different responses or different approaches to investing based on personalities. Some of this can be driven by uh, personal preferences like your risk appetite or aversion, but some of these seem to be uncorrelated with the standard channels. So that might suggest that um, if we push people with uh, personality traits that lead them to, to, to be uncomfortable with investing, maybe a little nudge will help with their welfare and economic outcomes if we, we can explain uh, what their personality types are and how that affects their their trading behaviors. So that is definitely a key outcome or result from the paper. Yeah, and, and let's talk a little bit. You mentioned behavior, and there's been a lot of work uh, from Richard Thaler. I think he's a Nobel laureate, Shlomo Benarchi. I, I know you have probably read a lot of the papers and been, been involved and know a lot of this research. Is this the kind of the next extension of that? So the behavior that we all have, You've got to kind of shape the behavior, but when you think about personality, that's kind of a different, um, a different level, a different dynamic to to investing and, and and building the better, the best retirement plan or the best investing strategy possible. Uh, that's exactly right. So just a little bit on this intellectual history. 
Um, in order to understand the investment behaviors and outcomes, we started with some economic constructs, things like belief and preference. So you, you think uh, you hear people talk about that all the time. Belief referring to people's expectation of future outcomes. Some people are more optimistic, some people are more pessimistic. And the preferences in this context are mostly about preferences for risks versus safety. Uh, and this large uh, behavioral literature, including Professor Taylor's work, is about uh, disentangling the relation between belief preference and possibly additional behavioral factors vis-a-vis -vis these financial behaviors and outcomes. So this is, I think, where the personality types come in. First, it could help us understand why preferences and beliefs are different across people. And second, they also shed light on possible alternative or additional mechanisms that drive financial decisions on top of these traditional ingredients. So, so in that sense, we are providing a bit of a, like a different angle or perspective in terms of the inner workings in the decision-making process. Well, Professor, I need to take a very quick break. When we come back, we'll talk more about your personality and your investment decision-making. You're gonna to wanna to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses, I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Tax audits, tax liens, wage garnishments. Every day we hear stories like this about good folks who are simply struggling to pay their bills. Each of them are living a frightening IRS tax nightmare and they are afraid it will destroy their lives. I'm a divorced single mom and my ex-husband left me and the kids with a lot of unpaid bills, including unpaid taxes. I was really starting to show my stress on my kids because the IRS had sent me a letter demanding a huge payment from me. I couldn't afford it. So then the IRS was threatening to garnish my wages. I'm already living paycheck to paycheck. That would have put me over the edge financially. It truly seemed hopeless, but then a friend at work told her to call the tax relief line. The people at the tax relief line, they told me about something called innocent spouse relief. They worked it out so that all of the taxes from my ex are not my problem. I don't know how that works and, and I don't care. All I care about is that I don't owe the IRS a dime and they are not going to take my paycheck. Even if it seems hopeless, you should call the number on your screen right now. There is absolutely no cost for the call or the consultation. You are under no obligation. If you are worried that the IRS could garnish your wages, seize your assets, even take your home, call us right now. The tax relief line is here to help you. Now you have a knowledgeable, professional team of tax experts that are ready to negotiate with the IRS and fight for you to save you money. 
The tax relief line's professionals have successfully negotiated thousands of cases, reducing and sometimes even eliminating the tax debt for their clients. It's very easy to get started. Simply call the number on your screen right now. You don't have to live in fear anymore. The call and the consultation are free. Well, Professor, thank you so much for sticking with us this morning. Really appreciate you hanging around for segment number two. Sounds good. Let's get started. Yeah, this is great. And happy, by the way, happy Cinco de Mayo to you. Uh, it's a little early to go out, but um, maybe a little bit later. Uh, Professor, let's talk about some lessons here from the research. We, we had referenced uh, the work by Professor Thaler and others in behavioral economics. Let's talk about what does this all mean for investment managers, people that manage investments, and also financial advisors, people that are working directly one-on-one with an individual. Mm -hmm. um, let me actually break this down to these two groups of people because there might be different lessons, in fact. The first for financial managers, uh, I guess the, the key message is that we are all outcomes of our personality types, which might be based on genetics, experiences, and so on. So for example, one personality trait that really stands out as a key driver of both financial outcome and also belief is neuroticism. So this is one of the key, the big five personality traits in our study. We find that uh, neuroticism, first of all, is related to things like uh, depression and withdrawal from challenges, feeling anxious or depressed over time. So this has been well established in the personality or psychology sphere. And when we bring this personality trait in association with uh, this financial data, we find that people with high neuroticism tend to be very pessimistic in their belief. To be more precise, they have a lower expectation of stock returns, GDP growth, and they have a higher expectation of inflation. So they tend to be the pessimists across the board. And our uh, message here is that first, uh, if the managers with certain personality disposition could understand themselves a bit better, they might want to adjust their uh, gut response to, to taking up uh, the investment opportunities. Maybe they need to understand that they are the more pessimistic personality types in the population and to make a sound, a sound investment decision, especially on behalf of other people, they might want to offset their natural disposition by rationally thinking about the risks they're taking and thinking about the incentives or uh, the objectives of their investment strategies. And second, for the financial advisors who advise people or who provide guidance for people who are perhaps less sophisticated in finance, I think a key um, lesson that we learned in this project is that uh, understanding your client's personality types is really a good way of uh, starting not only um, understanding their incentives and their biases, but also a good way of connecting to the clients. Let me again use neuroticism as an example. So suppose you are dealing with people with high neuroticism. Again, you want to help them understand what that means, not just for their personal life, but also for their financial investments. And you want to convince them maybe to take a little more risk than they would like to, help them to become comfortable with doing that and explain why that improves their portfolio or financial outcomes. On the other hand, if the clients are of a low neuroticism type, you might want to advise them against the road trading, against taking excessive risk, and explain how this is related to their personality disposition as well as to their financial outcomes. Yeah, and, and Professor, I want to carry it forward. One of the big issues in this country, and I think it really is globally, is financial education, financial literacy. How does this research shape how we teach our youngsters who arguably are maybe not getting the education they need around finance or getting other aspects, history, social studies, et cetera, uh, chemistry. But how does this shape the education so people become more financially literate, whether they're here in the States or somewhere else in the, on the globe? So, um, yes, I am very much um, agreeing with this direction. In fact, uh, the collaborator who helped us produce the survey and collect the data is American Association of Individual Investors, which is exactly devoted to the financial education of, of our country. So let me say two things here. Financial education is not just about understanding the market, but also about understanding oneself. 
because there is no one perfect solution of financial decisions or investment ideas. Everyone has to find something that is commensurate with their personality types and also with their life scenarios, with their life stages. Uh, when they are single, when they have kids, and when they are approaching retirement age, all of those things would mean that they want to pursue maybe a different and customized investment strategy. And financial education about both the market and about themselves through things like personality studies will help a lot to that direction. Yeah. And last question, Professor. I know you're real busy, but last question. I want to talk a little bit about technology and artificial intelligence. How can this data... Because I'm trying to think about, you know, a lot of companies are using artificial intelligence in order to reach and, and personalize. How could this research be helpful in layering that within an artificial con intelligence construct? Because I have to think that this, this research could, could be used for that. Certainly. So I think the key lesson here is to broaden the scope. You and I and many of the listeners might have taken financial survey before they started working with some advisors, right? The survey includes things like, let me choose between a riskier job with maybe higher outcomes in some states and lower outcomes in some states vis-a-vis -vis a more stable job with a stable income. Things like that helps the financial advisor to elicit risk preferences. So this is part of things that will be informative about this particular investor. But uh, uh, the, what I want to say is that by looking at how personality explains investment behaviors and this decision-making process, we may want to broaden the scope of input into this body of data that AI or other technology could help us process and help us understand the investors. So instead of, or in addition to asking about their risk preference, we may add additional things about personal behaviors and personality dispositions and this information will also be informative for AI to aggregate and to understand uh, the incentives of individuals. Yeah, well, this is, again, another layer to add. We keep on finding out more and more about ourselves. Uh, it's just kind of, it's really fascinating from that perspective. And obviously, when you layer in the investment decision making, it just adds another uh, bit of context. Professor, we're going to have to leave it there. Very interesting research. Congratulations to you and your colleagues for performing it. And we look forward to having you back on the program again very soon. Thanks. Good. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. And that wraps up this episode of BRNAM. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to, drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the latest current news and lifestyle, wellness, finance, tech, so much more in all in one place, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to search our archives, check out our latest content, we'll visit our website and, of course, all of our streaming partners. We're back again tomorrow for another edition of BRN Weekly. We'll be taking a look back, that's right, back at some of our best segments for the week. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device.